everyone! Today we are going to teach you three different techniques to figure out if your snake is a male or a female. The three different techniques we're going to teach you today are how to visually sex a snake, how to pop a snake, and finally how to probe a snake. Some snakes, mainly colubrids, can be sexed just by looking at the underside of their tail. Males typically have thicker, longer tails, whereas females usually have shorter and stubbier tails. This is because males have a pair of hemipenes, which are located just south of the cloaca inside of their tail, whereas females have just smaller scent glands located in that area. Let's use hognose snakes as an example. This is an adult male hognose snake. His name is Hot Dog. We've had him for quite a while here. Notice how his tail, which starts up here, this is this oddly colored scale is his anal plate or cloaca, the basically scale that covers the cloaca, which means the rest down here is the tail. Notice how his tail is the same width for quite a while after the cloaca before it tapers into a point. This is where his hemipenes are. Now look at this female. Her tail tapers almost right away after the cloaca because there are no hemipenes. In Instead, like I said earlier, she just has a pair of scent glands located right up here, and those are much smaller than hemipenes, so the tail tapers pretty much right away. Now, this is much more obvious in sexually mature snakes. Babies, especially with hognoses, you can usually still tell their sex based on their tail shape and length, but there are some babies that are difficult, like their tails are in between. So you kind of have to wait until those mature, until you know for sure. However, I would say over the years of breeding hognose snakes, we can tell in about 90% of the babies right when they hatch if they're males or females. In addition, you may have noticed the male is considerably smaller than the female, and these are both mature adults. And this is another sign of sexual dimorphism, where you can tell the gender just by looking at them visually, but this isn't always accurate with any snake. You might have a male that's this size as an adult, or it could be a younger or stunted female. On the flip side, I have seen some big male hognose snakes too, so you really want to double check with their tails instead of just assuming that they're overall size is what indicates their gender. Here they are side by side, and when you have a male and a female next to each other, it becomes very obvious which is which. This one is the female with that short stubby tail, and that one is the male with the much longer, thicker tail. Now when it comes to old female snakes, especially North American colubrids like hognose snakes, females will sometimes develop a very bulbous tail, which may make them look like a male, but instead it's actually just an impacted scent gland. This is Rin. She is an older female hognose snake, and she has an impacted scent gland, so I can show you what that looks like right here. Up here is her cloaca. There's that anal plate we pointed out earlier on the other snake. And this thick area is not a set of hemipenes, which you may think initially. Instead, it is an impacted scent gland. So the way to tell the difference between the two, because it can kind of throw you off, is if it's hemipenes, they will be thick but elongated for quite a while. In females with an impacted scent gland, the swelling or bulbous area will be more localized to just south of the cloaca and it doesn't extend very far. Uh, by the way, an impacted scent gland is very common in old female colubrids, and it's something that you don't really want to mess with because it can cause more harm than good, and you typically just leave it alone unless it becomes so bad that you have to express it. But in Rin's case here, our vet is monitoring her, and we're just leaving it as is for now. Before we move on to the second technique, which is popping, we're going to do a quiz round. You can visually sex other colubrids as well, not just hognose snakes, by the length and sh shape of their tail. So, we're going to test you with this pair of corn snakes. We have one male and one female, and we're going to see if you can tell which is which. All right, guys, we have one male and one female. We're going to give you a few seconds to try to figure it out, but the answer is this one. The white one is the female. You can see how she has a tail that tapers pretty much right away after the cloaca right here. It gets thinner and thinner and then to a point, whereas the male over here, his cloaca is way up here, and it's thick for quite a while before it finally starts to taper out. And again, that is evidence of the hemipenes, which are located right there. With practice, you can fairly accurately visually sex hognoses, bull snakes, corn snakes, and other colubrids. However, most North American, most North American colubrids, even old world rat snakes, you can use this technique for. However, visually sexing does not work on pythons and boa constrictors, typically. So we're going to move on to the next technique, which is popping. All right, so part two of today's video, how to pop snakes. Before I explain how to pop a snake, it's important to know that the hemipenes in a male snake are essentially held inverted within the body, and then they are everted during reproduction. So for the popping method, you are essentially popping out the hemipenes using a roll 
pulling or a pushing motion. Basically, if the hemipenes pop out, one or both, you have a male. If nothing pops out, or if the smaller scent glands become everted instead, you have a female. This is a baby ball python in our adoption program. I actually don't know if it's a male or a female, so we're gonna find out together. But I think this will be a good example to show the popping method because this is a lot easier on baby snakes than adults. And that's because, oh, we're gonna poop all over the floor. Awesome, yep, get it all out. All right, to pop, you turn the snake upside down. And of course you wanna support the snake with your four fingers here and apply a bit of pressure to the anal scale, which is the scale that covers the cloaca, but then pull it back just ever so slightly with your thumb and take your other thumb and while still supporting the tail with your forefinger underneath, apply a bit of pressure with your thumb, but then roll it north towards the cloaca. And if you have a male, this kind of pinching slash just backwards pressure motion will evert the hemipenes through the cloaca and that'll prove that you have a male snake. If you don't have any hemipenes, like I'm rolling here and I don't see any hemipenes popping out, so another technique that you can try is you can take your thumb and instead of rolling you can slide it towards the cloaca and even then I'm not seeing any hemipenes come out. Instead I see tiny little nodules poking out which those are actually scent glands so this is a female. Whereas with this baby ball python we're going to use the same technique and actually what seems to be working better for me recently is the sliding rather than the rolling technique so I'm gonna slide my thumb towards the cloaca. There we go, we have a hemipene sticking out there. So this is a male ball python. Now you may be wondering what the difference is based on from what we just looked at there. The difference between the hemipenes and scent glands is that scent glands are typically lighter in color with just like a red nodule on the very tip. And they're generally a bit smaller too, but with babies it can be kind of hard to tell. So with males, the hemipene, the entire hemipene is more of a red color. So that's how we're able to tell the difference here. So this is a little boy. All right. My words of wisdom for popping snakes, since it does take a bit of practice, are one, use more pressure than you would think, two, Practice makes perfect. If you are popping and you think you have a female, you might have a male and you just might not be applying enough pressure. So keep practicing until you are confident with it and with the motion and uh, technique itself. And three, popping is a lot easier on baby snakes than adults, which is why if you have an adult snake that you are trying to sex, we recommend the third technique, which is probing. The third and final method for sexing snakes is the probing technique. And just as it sounds, you essentially slide a metal probe down in through the cloaca, down the tail of the snake, and depending on how far it goes, you can determine if you have a male or a female. Again, both the scent gland and the hemipene are essentially inverted within the tail, so each one creates a pocket of sorts just south of the cloaca. The scent glands are a lot smaller and therefore the pocket is a lot shallower in females, whereas males with hemipenes, which are much longer, have much deeper pockets. So, depending on the depth of the probe and therefore the length of the pocket, you can determine if you have a male or a female. To probe, you will need a reptile probing kit, just like this one, as well as either mineral oil or a reptile safe lubricating oil like KY jelly. We'll put affiliate links to both of these in the description below. You'll also need a second person to help hold the snake for you because while probing isn't painful for the snake, you do have to have them held upside down during the process and they don't necessarily like that. So get a second person. The first thing you have to do is decide which probe you're going to use. And I almost always use the smallest probe the kit comes with. It seems like the pockets are a lot thinner and therefore just easier to find with a smaller probe. So I am just gonna grab this probe right here. I don't know, this one must be for like ginormous retics or something because I'm always using the smallest two sizes even for adult corn snakes or ball pythons. Next, you're gonna wanna take that probe and dip it in your lubricating oil, in this case, KY jelly. Once your probe is lubricated, have your helper or second person hold the snake belly side up and just kind of make sure that the head end doesn't get into too much trouble. Then I like to take my non dominant hand and kind of cradle the tail to hold it as straight as possible in between my thumb going alongside it and my other fingers supporting it from the other side. Then once the tail is secure and straight, take the probe and with just a little bit of pressure, slide it underneath the anal plate. And then this is very important. You want to 
pivot the probe so that it is parallel and goes down into the tail. But make sure you don't turn it outward so that you're going into the body of the snake. Very important. Keep it flush with the body of the snake. So again, we're going to slide the probe underneath the anal scale right here. We're going to pivot it so that it goes down into the tail itself. And then through the cloaca, these pockets are going to be on either side. With a lot of snakes, they have split scutes down underneath or south of the cloaca. So you can better visualize where those pockets are going to be, which will be centralized in either one of these rows here. So one more time, sliding the probe underneath the anal plate, we're pivoting, and then we are going to essentially fish around a little bit and apply a bit of pressure, feel around until we can feel or find that pocket. And I found the pocket, it, it slid down just a little bit here, and I feel a tiny bit of resistance actually pretty much right away. As soon as you feel resistance, don't push any further or you could damage or injure your snake. Instead, stop, take your thumb, place it at the bottom of the probe where it inserts through the cloaca to kind of mark how far down it went, slide it back out, and then compare it to the snake itself on the outside. If the probe went down two or three scales, you typically have a female. If it went down five plus scales, you typically have a male. Now, if a snake has like four-ish scales down that it went, you might just want to go ahead and send in a shed skin sample to get it genetically tested because four scales or somewhere in between there, it can be hard to know for sure. But most snakes will fall under the category of either the probe going down just two or three scales, or it'll go down like five plus scales. So it's usually pretty obvious. Since the probe only went down two scales, in this case, we have a female. All right, snake number two here. We're going to do the same technique. We're going to slide the probe under the anal plate, pivot it, and slide it in through the cloaca. He is just not happy because no, he's he upside down super right now. super unhappy. <laughs> so we're going to slide it down, see how far it goes. Oh, oh wow, look at that. Oh, we're going, you know, I'm just going to stop it right there. No need to go any further. I'm going to mark it as far as I went, but this is far enough. It's enough scales deep to tell me that this is a male because it went down into a hemipene. So to recap probing, if the probe goes down one to three-ish scales, it went down into a scent gland and therefore you have a female. If your probe goes down five plus scales, it went down into a hemipene and therefore you have a male. Keep in mind that the probing technique, if done incorrectly, can injure your snake. That's that's why it's so important to stop pushing the probe down or sliding it down any further if you feel any resistance whatsoever. Now granted, when you're first trying to find the pocket, you kind of do have to fish around a little bit, but once you're in the pocket, as soon as you feel resistance, stop sliding it in, mark it with your thumb how far it went, slide it out, and then count the scale depth. Uh, if you keep pushing, you can break or burst through that tissue, which can impede your snake's ability to breed. It, the tissue can definitely heal over time, but you don't want to risk injuring your snake at all anyway. So if you feel any resistance, stop sliding the probe in any further. So we have gone over the three techniques in how to sex your snake, visually, popping, and probing, but which is the best to use for your snake? If you have a North American colubrid, or really most colubrids, uh, you can be pretty confident in visually sexing that snake. If you're not sure though, if you're inexperienced, then you might want to do the popping or probing technique. If you have a python or a boa, basically a non-colubrid, then you can't visually sex them very well. So that's when I would recommend either popping or probing. Popping for babies, probing for adults is what I would recommend. So for example, this ball python here, this is banana bread. I would not visually sex him because he's not a colubrid, but I also wouldn't pop him because he's an adult. And adults have such strong muscles in their tail that you can't very easily pop out hemipenes or scent glands, so it's just best to probe in this case. However, if you have a clutch of baby ball pythons, their muscles aren't very well developed yet, especially during day one and day two, so you can pretty easily go through and pop them all in quick succession. I guess there are a couple other ways to tell if your snake is a male or a female, but they're kind of circumstantial, like if your snake lays eggs, it's a female. If it everts its hemipenes when it's pooping, it's probably a male. But those are, again, circumstantial, and you kind of have to get luckier, uh, uh, roll the dice with those instances. So if you want to know for sure, and you want to know now, popping, probing, visually sexing, there are a few different options on how to do it. Now, all of this being said, I can only teach so much in a video. So if you are new to owning snakes, or you've never popped or probed a snake before, we highly recommend reaching out to a snake breeder or other professional or maybe reptile specialty store to ask somebody experienced in this to show you and teach you how to do it in person. Because again, you can risk the health of 
of the snake if you do it improperly. So thank you for watching today's How to Sex Your Snake video. I hope you learned something new. Thank you Patreon backers for your amazing support as always, and we'll see you next time. Oh, and thank you, Nora, for your beautiful drawing of Rex, which I hope you don't mind I use the backside of for today's script. Wanna give you a quick shout out. Thanks, Nora.